Good evening, sisters and brothers, family and friends of Love and the Scriptures. Welcome, welcome back uh, tonight to this um, week, this installment of Love and the Scriptures. Um, so good to have you tonight. So good for you to be here with me. I'm glad that you are um, to be here to do what we do on Wednesday nights. Amen. Um, now, you know what the process is. This first part is getting um, the other channels, getting this uh, uh, this computer stuff, these other sites, social media sites, getting them set up and tuned in. So that is what we are doing. Um, you know what the discussion is. Maybe you do. Uh, we are talking about uh, this is Pastor's Appreciation Month. Uh, and of course, again, I want to give a shout out <clears throat> to all of those pastors, uh, ministers, those who are in the work of ministry, uh, those clergy persons who have acknowledged and accepted the call to this gospel ministry. God bless you so well. It is tedious. Sister Portia from the San Francisco area. Hello, my sister. So good to have you on here. Thank you so much, too, for your contribution for Pastor Appreciation Month. God bless you real good for thinking about us and for your generosity to us. God bless you. Um, and we're still in that same vein on Pastor Appreciation Month. Um, I want to say this, a um, couple of things going on. Uh, I won't take a long time doing introduction this time like I did last week and get lost in the shuffle. Uh, but I do want to say, um, I do want to say that uh, <laughs> No Shave November starts, of course, the first of next month. But uh, I'm beating it to the punch. I already started No Shave in October because um, I'm. I'm going to grow it out a little bit for the end of the year and have a little gray fuzzy going on, uh, get shaped up, get cut up and everything like that. Um, what do you all think in terms of beard? Um, shadow like it was, mid like it is, or something fuller like that? What What do you think about that? And some of you have <laughs> said uh, mentioned about Hairstyle, hair shape. Uh, what, what do you think? Keep the fro, go low, <clears throat> get some side shave, cut. What what do you all think about about, <laughs> about that there? I see, uh, since Portia say the shadow on the beard. And that's what we've worn for the last probably eight, seven, eight, nine months. I'm on that order. Um, okay, thank you for that. Who else? Whoever else, what do you think? What do you say on that? Um, <clears throat> this coming weekend, ladies and gentlemen, the last Sunday of Pastoral Appreciation Month, last week and a half for that, um, you do yourself well, you serve yourself well to remember those to whom God has given care of your soul. And because that's what uh, ministry, those who minister to you that's what that work is about because that's what that work is about um you ma'am you sir should be diligent should do diligence in making sure um that <clears throat> you respond positively that you congratulate that you appreciate <clears throat> those who have care uh over your soul amen uh, let's remember to do that. Um, full looks good, uh, Sister uh, Vicki Johnson Williams says. Now it's not full yet. This is this is about medium. This is about mid. Um, full's gonna be a little bigger than this. Probably like my profile picture on Facebook is more at least full for me because I don't do all of the uh, what do they call it the the big, long sage beards. That's what I call it. The big, long, 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 but fuller than this. Um, get it shaped up. All right. Thank you all for your 
ideas, your opinions on that. Nobody said anything about the, the hair, whether to keep the fro, let it grow, or take it low. Nobody said anything on that. Uh, tell me what you think. You can put it in the chat. You can message me on it. Hair low. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, you can put, put whoever else, put it in the chat. Say what you want to say on that. I'm inviting us, ladies and gentlemen, to be thought partners, conversation partners with us uh, again, even on tonight in our discussion on uh, Pastor's Appreciation. Last week, I talked to us about pastoring good, bad, and the ugly. And what I actually did, did too, in terms of the group, I put um, or solicited um, feedback from those who have experienced themselves personally or have witnessed or known of <clears throat> any in that category of uh, ugly pastoral situation where there was blatant and obvious abuse um, from pastoral leadership um, uh, or a bad pastoral situation where a pastor, you were under a pastor or experienced a pastor, known of one, who did not know what they were doing, didn't understand the call, didn't understand ministry, didn't understand church or anything of what this was about. Or even if you've had that experience in ministry, uh, what's, what's been a good experience where um, the leader, uh, the pastoral leader, uh, there was evidence of God's call on their life and that there was evidence in the work of ministry that they made foolproof the work of their ministry in terms of seeing uh, people's lives touched and changed by God uh, and they being the people being nurtured and um, fed and cared for the way that a person's uh, life is supposed to be under good pastoral leadership. Um, you can, uh, as we even are here right now, you can share your experiences uh, it, uh, with or about that if you have that. We can we can uh, look at that and talk about that. But I want to finish up uh, because I gave us two texts where I believe um or at least two of the texts uh, of scripture that um influence and inform um what uh pastoral ministry where the responsibility where the where the parameters of what it is about is found um and um how uh, what response is there to be when that kind of um leadership is in place and is active uh let me pull up those texts again one of them of course uh jeremiah i think is it one and eight um where God speaking through the prophet says uh, that I will give you pastors after my own heart. And I want us to look directly at the text so we can um, to be able to pull out and address exactly what is there. Uh, and it's King James Version. I'm sorry, Jeremiah 315. Oh, what in the world? I was thinking Jeremiah 315. Um, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. I don't believe you have to go any further than that one verse right there to get not just a caption or a encapsulated or encapsulated uh, form or idea or description or image or understanding of what the role of a pastor, what pastoral ministry is, um, neither do I think you need to go further than that to get an expanded, a large, a huge, a big picture view of what the role, the ministry, what, what the idea of pastoral ministry fully is. I think in a nutshell and in 
a huge, fully um, encompassing way. It is explained there about pastoral ministry. A couple of ideas I just want to pull out uh, because I do want to talk about, uh, give some of the pastoral pearls um, that I that I, I wrote um, in 2020. The verse, and I, and I mean, if you just to break it down simply, understand number one, that is God that's talking, which means that the whole situation and the condition God has fully and is fully aware of and is taking into account. Uh, God, again, is speaking in this verse. It's prophecy of Jeremiah, but it's God speaking to the prophet, through the prophet, to the people about their situation on the ground. God identifies and recognizes uh what is happening with the people that's the first thing that we got to understand when it comes to pastoral ministry it doesn't start with the pastor it doesn't start with the people it starts with god god says that i means that i'm aware i'm alert about what's going on and i'm able <laughs> watch this and able to do something about it i will give and so god's response to acknowledging that there is a vacuum of the kind of leadership or vacuum of the kind of movement that the, he wants the people to have or a vacuum in the kind of development or growth that is necessary for the people to be who he wants God, he God wants them to be. His response to acknowledging that is that he's going to give to it. He's going to He's going to add to it that he's going to invest in the deficiency or the vacuum that he sees that is happening to the people. God sees he's aware of what's going on. His antidote is to give, to invest in the situation. What becomes very um, particular for us to pay attention to is what he decides to give to aid in the problem. Pastors is the decision that God makes when he sees the vacuum that the people have in terms of how he wants the, who he wants them to be, what he wants them to do. A pastor is what God decides. Pastors is what he decides the people need. For them to be what God wants them to be. I will give you pastors. And of course, many other translations uh, has shepherds there. Um, this is King James, which is the, the translation that I wrote. I learned this passage uh, from King James Version. And even though shepherds is what's used there. No, no, no. no let me say it that way. Shepherds is used there because of the agriculture uh, nature, the agrarian nature of their society, which everybody understood that uh, how close um, God used what naturally occurs to give example of how he would work in their lives um, in their agrarian society shepherds because many of them had and tended to sheep and the role then of a shepherd they were fully aware of now whether they got the connection to themselves and sheep because the text doesn't mention sheep it talks about or envisions the role of a shepherd, whether they understood God seeing them as sheep, we don't know. But we can safely assume that the connection of what a shepherd does with and for sheep and how one a shepherd cares for them is the same metaphorical way or the same way metaphorically that a pastor 
does with the people. And all this is God now. Um, neither Jeremiah or any of the other prophets, none of the priests in Judah, none of the people consulted with God on what he needed to send for them in this vacuum that they had and who they were supposed to be and how were they supposed to move and where they're supposed to be going. They didn't consult with God didn't invite them in consultation when it came to what they needed for what he has made them to be. God sovereignly, singularly, unilaterally decided that it was pastors who they understood, would understand because they knew who shepherds were, that it's them that God would give. Doesn't stop there. He goes on. The next step um, is, and I, God speaking, will give his investment in the problem. You pastors, what he is antidoted, what he has decided, prescribed, uh, to the situation, here's here's a, a very uh, 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 important part for us, according to my own heart. We can't miss that. And let me tell you back up again and say to us, sisters and brothers, the reason that I'm uh, drawing out of this verse uh, of Jeremiah, this is Pastor's Appreciation Month. There are a whole lot of ways that some people do appreciate, love pastors and, and make it known. There is, there are a lot of people who have a high regard for pastors, pastoral ministry, and they make it known. <clears throat> there are a lot of people that love God's church and understand the fit. They, 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 they don't have a problem with how God has given the pastor to the church, all right? But there still are a whole lot of people that don't understand and know about the role of the pastor in the church of the living God. There are a lot of people that don't appreciate pastors and pastoral ministry. There are a whole lot of people that um, <clears throat> not only don't appreciate, there are some that do not like pastors and don't care nothing about pastoral ministry. Because that's the case, for these weeks of this month of October of Pastoral Appreciation Month, I wanted to give to us some kind of a sense of, of how and why, why and maybe even how we can be appreciative of the gift that God has given to the church, which is the pastor, right? That's what that's what I'm taking this time of. Uh, and extrapolating out of this verse and, and what I'll be doing with these pastoral pearls. That's why I'm taking this time to do this for us, because if we love the church, and of course, there are some challenges with that either, but the church is given to us by God. If we love what God loves, how about that? I'm going to do it that way. Um, then we ought to have a better sense of and a better idea and a better appreciation for um, those things that God has given those things that God uh, himself loves. That's why I'm doing this with this verse. And I will give you, Pastor, according to my own heart, a critical point for reflection for us to understand, to recognize, to realize that it's just not any old body. And God's giving to the church or churches given to them pastors, it ain't just any old body. That's why we gotta be careful when we call our sons and make sure they're the ones that succeed us as we get too old to continue the work of ministry. That, that's why we gotta be careful when we go out to do the hand picking. I got some uh, feedback in a conversation last week when I mentioned that, when it came to the bad of pastoring and I talked about how um, uh, we develop these dynasties when we have, and it doesn't even have to be having built a big, large, huge ministry. 
Sometimes little teeny tiny churches want to make sure that they stay in the family too. But this idea of dynasty and um, um, heirs of su and succession that we pass this church on to our family, want to keep it in the family. We got to be really careful about that. Let me tell you why. This ain't just my uh, renderings and my warnings. Listen what the scripture said. The scripture says, God speaking again, this is in Jeremiah. God says, I will give you pastors after my own heart. Daddy, if it's your desire that your son pastors after you in the place that you have built, that's not after God's heart. That's after your heart. If it's in your mind to continue this in the family, that's after yours. That ain't after God's heart. And you got to be careful about this because what God says should happen, what God is looking for at the end or in the process of pastoral ministry, the pastor with the people, God is looking for something specific. And in order to get that that he wants, the one that he gives has to be one that's after his own heart. He says it. I'm aware of the issues with the people. I'm going to invest in resolving the issue. What I'm going to give is pastors. And they will be ones after my own heart. What does a pastor do? What is the role of the pastor as defined in the scripture? You don't have to make it up. <laughs> It's right there in black and white. He says, pastors, according to my own heart, comma, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And I got a whole lot to say right there. And some of it will make a whole lot of people mad. But I ain't scared of none of that. You ought to know. <laughs> Out of all that we have seen, learned, and made pastoral ministry to be, the measuring rod, the dividing line, the delineation points, the explanation is given in this verse. He says, the pastors, God speaking, that he gives after his own heart will feed you, the people, with knowledge and understanding. Now, <laughs> Let me say this this way first. I said this way first. The purpose of pastoral ministry and neither the function is about building brands, building my own brand. It ain't in the verse. The purpose of pastoral ministry is not building mega churches. It ain't in the verse. The purpose of pastoral ministry is not making my name great or making it known. It's not in the verse. Purpose of pastoral ministry is not making a lot of money and getting rich. It ain't in the verse. In fact, nothing about what the verse says that the pastor that God gives after his own heart, nothing in it says anything about what's going to happen with the pastor in the process. Let me draw that out a little bit more if 
the name being known if a large ministry a mega ministry uh is built if if um if being uh becoming wealthy if those things happen incidentally to what god says the pastor will do feed you with knowledge and understand if those things happen as a result of you doing what god says the pastor is supposed to do well and good but nothing in the verse says that that's what the pastor goes into pastoral ministry for it's not what you set out to do. It's not what you are looking to make happen. It's not what you're working for. Making your name great, building a great church and, 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 and you becoming rich. That's not what pastoral ministry is for. You don't go into it for that and you don't, don't change the focus of it into that. The job of the pastor is to feed the people with knowledge and understanding. Let me give the simplest hermeneutic for what feeding with knowledge and understanding is about because it's multi-tiered, it's nuanced, it's 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 uh, 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 several levels to understanding what's happening just with that responsibility, feeding with knowledge and understanding. But the baseline, the top line of what is to be understood is to feed them with knowledge, to teach them who God is, to teach them how God is. And sisters and brothers, guess what? Sister proclaimers, brother proclaimers, other preachers, you can't teach them who God is and how God is if you don't know who he is and how he is first. Teach them who God is how God is. That's knowledge. And the understanding then is how I am to walk with him. Understand how I am to serve him. Understand how I am to live for him. The knowledge is about the person of God. The understanding is about my relationship now that I know who and how he is. That's the baseline understanding. It's so much more nuanced. It's so much deeper than that, sisters and brothers. But I just let me give you today the top line that the pastor's job is to know God and make him known to the people. The pastor's job is to teach the people, to exemplify, to model the way to walk with, the way to live for. That's the understanding that we ought to have when pastoral ministry is done effectively. The biggest sight in the people's eyes, in the people's eyes, even though you stand in front of them week after week, the biggest sight and image in their eyes, when you finish doing what you're doing, <laughs> they're supposed to see the Lord. Amen to that. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I have to give us our, our other verse uh next time. It's uh it's Tim. I told y'all with to go find it. I got some confirmation in there. You better say that. Say it, yes, sir. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for that affirmation. Um, next week, we're going to be on pastoral pearls. I'm going to give them to you then. We're going to do our last verse in Timothy, which tells us about those who rule well uh, should be kind of with double honor. Uh, that's what we're going to talk about on next time. That's the other verse, the response you're supposed to have to a pastor who rules well, to who, who does their job well. That's where we're going to be on that. See you next week, 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time for love and the scriptures. God bless you.